what's a good credit to debt ratio for any one of us to have? So I would say playing it safe is 10 to 30%, right? Because if you have anything over 50% debt utilization, you're in a sense affecting the, the so 30% of your credit score is the debt utilization, right? That's 165 points. So you could have a 600 or a 765. Like the 765 obviously looks better because that means that you have low debt. So the lower debt you have, or the, or I'm sorry, the higher debt you have, the closer to that 600 you're going to be going down. So if you're at 50%, you might be like at a 680, right? If you pay it 30%, you might be close to seven. If you're at 10% debt utilization, you might be like at a 710, 730. You know what I mean? So it's like the lower you go, the better. I always advocate as much as you can, if you have the means and, and, and you really put everything you can into getting your debt down, I would say 10% or lower is where you want to be. So if you have $10,000 in overall credit available, you really don't want to be over $1,000 a month. You know what I mean? You want to keep it, try to keep it under 1000 because that's going to put you, that's going to be the difference of you. So, so like, let's say you have nothing negative on your credit report, nothing negative all your credit cards are maxed out. You're going to be at a 600. As soon as you pay off all your debt, you're going to go into the 740, 730 bracket. And, and it, it could be a different, and the, the great thing is, it doesn't matter if you have a $100 credit card with a $10 balance, it's going to affect you the same way as a $1,000 credit card and a $100 balance. It's all about the percentage. So some people might say, oh, well, I only have a $200 secure credit card. There's only a hundred dollars on there. Yeah, but you're at fifty percent utilization. So somebody with a ten thousand dollar credit card can have a thousand, and they're in a better position because their utilization for that credit card is lower than your utilization, even though the debt is more. If that makes sense, it's crazy how it makes how the game sense. Works. It makes yeah. perfect sense, and I'm so happy that you're sharing this because. Yeah. You know, most people would think, hey, I got a $500 credit card or I got a $1,500 um, credit limit, rather. But, you know, I max out or maybe I do about $800 a month on it. You would think that you're doing better than somebody who has a $10,000 credit card who's putting $1,000 a month on it. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm so happy you're bringing these points up because I didn't realize it, it was weighed that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely weighed by the percentage, not by the amount that you have. Like I have a client that has like, maybe like I have one client in particular, he has like $300,000 in credit card debt. Oh, I'm sorry, in credit card available credit. So if he puts, he can put $50,000 on one of his cards and his utilization is still fine. Even though it's 50 grand, mm -hmm. he's still good. Now you have somebody that has, like I said, it's always it's it's usually people that have a low limit that usually tend to max it out, and then not they're not able to catapult to that next level because they always are used to like just small limits, just three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, and they put five hundred dollars on. It's like, man, my credit score is not going up. Yeah, it's because you just have the wrong cards. That's all it is. You just have the wrong cards. Let's stick to cards for a second. Mm -hmm. Are there any cards that are better? or worse for you in terms of building credit. So we see, you know, obviously you see the visas, the MasterCards, the mm -hmm. Capital Ones, they, they, they pump, a, you know, American Express, they pump a lot of money into marketing and promotion. Mm -hmm. Are there any that I should be seeking out that is gonna help me overall or are they all the same? So once you get to like, you know, if you get like a secure credit card and you get past the point where you, you don't have to really put any money down to apply for credit cards, which is like a deposit. You know, you want to go to like the Capital Ones, the the Chase, the American Express. Once you, Chase and American Express, once you get to like 700, 720 to maximize your credit limit available, you know, you, you might have a 680 with no negative items, apply for American Express or Chase, maybe get a two three $3,000 limit. But if you get 720, 730 credit score, that could be the difference if you're getting a fifteen or twenty thousand dollar limit. You know what I mean? So when your credit is 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 really good and you're getting there, American Express, Chase, 
those are the cards that you really want to navigate towards because now you get rewards. Now you can start traveling for free. You can get hotels for free. You get free meals. You get Uber credits, things like that. But the cards to stay away from um, is, I don't know if you've ever heard of them, it's called Credit One Bank and no. then First Premier Bank. So you have these cards. What they're going to do is they're going to approve you for a credit card. As soon as they approve you for the credit card, they're going to tack on a $75 annual fee on it, right? right? As soon as you get the card. So now you're getting the card thinking you have 300 available, but you only have 225. Now you spend a hundred dollars on it. Now you have $175. Now you're almost maxed out already. And then now you, you, you make a $25 payment, which is the minimum, but now you have a, a 30%, you know, 27% interest rate. So now the $25 payment you just made doesn't matter because they just tacked on $30 worth interest and, and you can never escape that hole. You know what I mean? Like a little hamster running in a circle because now that's as soon as they tack on that $75, it's like you, you're, you're already, it's, it's a trap. It's in. And then they'll charge you every month. Even if you don't use the card, like first premier and credit one, I think it's like eight to $10 a month. Even if you don't use the card, $8, $10, $8. Next thing you know, in a year, that's over a hundred bucks. That's a yep. hundred dollars. Yep. Now you have first, you, and the thing is, they're like, hey, you, you've done so good with us. We're going to offer you another first premiere with no $75, but they're still charging you $10 a month. Now you have a credit one card. Oh, you've done so good. We're going to give you another credit one. Next thing you know, you're paying $40 to $50 a month in just fees to just have the cards. Multiply that by 12. You're talking about almost $600 a year in just fees to just have the cards open where you could have put that somewhere else. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Say I'm doing well. I'm paying back, um, you know, I'm paying my bills on time. How do I go about getting a credit line increase? Uh, how, you know, is it simple as calling them? Do, is it anything that I need to do in particular to get my credit increase? Yep. I would say call. You could do it through the app um, or online. You know, usually if you go to settings and your credit score, I... So before you apply for a credit limit increase, there's one thing I always tell people. Number two, make sure there's no late payment with any of your credit card companies in the last six months and make sure you have pretty good low utilization. So um, you don't have to have excellent credit to get a limit increase, but you do want to have good credit in the sense where there's nothing negative in the last six months and you, your credit cards aren't maxed out. And instead of going on your phone to, to apply for the limit increase through the app or whatever, you, you guessed it, call them. I, like, the phone is your best friend. Give them a call and say, hey, and this is a script you can use. So if you want to, you know, this is a script you guys can use. I, I use this all the time for myself and clients. And you can say, hey, how you doing? I'm calling about my account, giving me information, whatever the case is, and say, yeah, so I've been a client of your, I've been a customer with, you know, Credit One, I mean, with Capital One, American Express Chase, you know, for about three years now. And, um, you know, I, I really do appreciate the, the value that this card has. It's allowed me to be able to travel. It's allowed me to be able to do a lot of things. I wanted to see if you can actually look into my account and see if I'm eligible for a credit limit increase. So that way I can continue using this card and benefit from the great rewards that it has. So that way I can recommend you to my friends and family, right? You say that over the phone, they're going to be like, okay, well, let me see. Well, what kind of limit were you thinking of? They always didn't ask you that. Well, what limit were you thinking of? You know, currently right now you have about a $3,000 limit. You know, well, actually, I was kind of look, hopefully, trying to get like a six or seven thousand dollar limit. You know, but can you see if I can maybe be eligible for a ten thousand? You know, um, and, and see what we can get. If we can get ten thousand, that would be great. It would really help me out a lot. Like you kill them with kindness, you know, and, and, and just that little script right there. They're gonna be like, "Hey, Mr. Rodriguez, well, we tried to approve you for a ten thousand, but unfortunately, we only only able to approve you for a seven thousand for right now. You can check with us in about six months to a year to get something else, and that's it." You know, you call them over the phone, you get a live person on the phone, they're, they're going to do more than a computer. with Because if you put on the phone and you just put like, I want a limit increase and you don't put an actual amount, they might only improve you 500. It's not enough. You know what I mean? So they will run your credit though, Sean. That's the one thing I want people to understand. With a credit limit increase, they usually will run your credit, but it's okay. The limit that you're going to get is going to supersede the one inquiry. Now, oh, good. if you have... If you have three credit cards and you try to get a limit increase on one of them and they decline you, don't do the other two because now you're going to have 
three inquiries three. with no, you know what I mean? But if they approve you on the first one, good. Maybe go for a second one a week later and then the third one. But it's six months um, to a year, every six months to a year, Sean, make sure that you're calling each of your credit card companies and put a reminder in your phone to always get a limit increase because you can start with $5,000 of available credit between all your credit cards in 2015. Next thing you know, in 2020, you've called them six months to a year religiously. Now you're at 50. Now you're at 60. Now you're at 70 because every year you're getting, you're asking them for a limit increase because you're demonstrating good positive payment history and, and low debt utilization. So that's where you want to be. And then in 2025, you'll be at 100,000. And then 20, 20, 2030, you'll be at over, you know, 150, 200. And that's really where you want to try to get to. I, you know, this such great information because this goes against uh, what I would consider to just be just common, uh, a common thought process. I would never think to call a credit card company every six months mm -hmm. to ask for a credit increase. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd be actually too worried to do that myself. What's up guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.